Hello, this is my guide to the UBR Wind Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14 on veteran difficulty. A little bit different from my previous videos, this is actually a post commentary video as I had numerous audio problems in my first attempt at recording this, also in my previous video, so I'm hoping I have now resolved them. If you notice anything amiss with the audio, whether the narration is too quiet or whether the background music is too loud, or if there's any crunching noises, please let me know in the comments. But other than that, we have Liu Biao here in 207. This is shortly historically before the collapse of Liu Biao's governance in Jing province. In 208, he dies of sickness or old age, depending on your perspective at the time. His sons then proceed to surrender to Cao Cao. Now, playing as Liu Biao, we're going to try and take history in a completely different direction, taking a look as to what our surroundings are. Cao Cao to the north, Sun Chuen to the east. Our former vassals in the south, which are now independent. And, of course, as we go on to our west, we have Liu Chang, who is building up Shu province and will eventually be a major rival to us. Not at this moment, no, he needs about a year to build up. So uh, to our north primarily, we have Cao Cao and Liu Bei. Liu Bei is our ally at the moment, and Cao Cao is the big blue bad blob in this game, and he is going to be the final boss, so to say. But notably, we are at war with Sun Chuan, and while we are not at war with Cao Cao yet, the moment Xin Yi falls, we will be at war with Cao Cao. So our plan will be, how do we tackle this? And getting straight to the point, our plan will be to betray Liu Bei. The reason for this is Xin Yi is in Northern Jing. We need the entirety of Northern Jing to qualify for Lieutenant Colonel. That we need two full provinces and the easiest provinces to gain there are Northern Jing and Southern Jing. In fact, they're the only ones that are accessible to us at the moment, as we have no means of conquering Sun Chuan or Liu Chang within the first year or two of the game. So, we will need to take out Liu Bei, um, other, than, other than the Prefect bonus. Of course, he has a top tier quality of officers, and there is a healing item in Xin Yi, which Liu Bei tends to pick up very quickly. With this healing item, we can prevent Liu Biao's death, it will extend it for 5 to 10 years, so we will be able to keep going for a little bit uh, longer. Now, Liu, Bei's admin Liu, Bei Liu Biao's administration is a little different than most factions in the game, I think dare I say all factions, in that um, he has Confucian, which isn't unique for Liu Biao, however, he does have several scholar officers, some of them starting with him, some of them being picked up shortly after the start of the scenario, and what those do are, they generate passive Doctrine EXP each turn, so our Doctrine level will rapidly rank up, this will unlock more slots, and it will let us upgrade our force beyond um, the limited means of our Doctrine. So even though we only have two battle policies, three support policies, we do have the means of maxing that out quite quickly. And also, quite notably, once Liu Biao dies, we can keep our level of doctrine upon our successor, even if the successor has a different doctrine policy. So if Liu Biao dies, we can replace it with somebody that has unfettered, or that has might. And that way we have a high ranking doctrine while also having a better policy. So Liu Biao dying can actually be quite uh, an opportunity, and it gives you the opportunity to make a tactical decision. Other than that, what Liu Biao does have, uh, through the Take the Initiative policy, access to Sai Mao and Chang Yun, is uh, at very quick and easy access to level 10 navy, which is um, essential for when you're fighting Sun Chuan to the east, who is your natural enemy. Going back to the days of the Yuan Chao, Yuan Chu proxy war. And um, other than that, the domestics for Liu Bei are fantastic. You have the potential to max out both uh, area development and troop recruitment very early on, if you choose to do so. 
and it's a shame that you have so many skiing policies but even those can be somewhat useful and as they do save the money you need to spend on buying alliances and gifting in general so here I am pointing out the scholar officers, at least one of them here, to indicate that these are the officers that will uh, give you this free Doctrine EXP. So, moving on from our administration, let's have a look at our officers. Now, Ganning. Ganning is a... how shall I put this? A tragedy, I think is the best way to put it. He is usually one of the better officers in the game, in these Koei Romance of the Three Kingdoms games. However, he has been terribly hard done by in this. He is um, by far, you know, far away from not being a top tier officer. He's not even like a middle tier officer in my view. He is highly situational because he has very impractical formations. He has arrow and he has fish. Neither of those formations you will be using in, I say, about 80% of scenarios. Arrow formation you use almost exclusively when defending for the mobility and the ability to cut, surround and cut off officers from their supply line quite, supply, supply line quite quickly. And snake formation is only really useful in mountainous terrain in the occasional, you know, foresty area. But there are very few of those. I can't even think of one off the top of my head. But you know, mountains, Runan, Wan, uh, Jianyi, and Zitong. Those are all mountainous provinces where you can make use of snake formation. But nine times out of ten, you want fish, or you want goose, or you even want ring. And Ganning has none of those. So, Ganning does have catapult formation, which is a waste, really. But it is the only option you have. You have no means of using your unique tactic in catapult formation and brocade assault is very powerful it does high single target damage based on the strength of your officer and the opposing officer the higher your strength the lower their strength the more damage you do and it also causes disorder so it is actually very useful one of the better unique tactics in the game you just don't have the opportunity to make use of it and uh, Ganning's traits Water Warlord is very useful early, early on when you're fighting Sun Chuen over the, um, not the Yellow River, is it the Yangtze? Yeah, I believe it's the Yangtze. Um, so while you're fighting Sun Chuen over the Yangtze, you can really make use of Water Warlords, but of course as you move north it's completely useless. You feel useless. A courageous trait, it makes you um, a particularly powerful unit when you're at 3000 or less troops, so it, I do quite like this trait as earlier on. It does let you deploy smaller units that are more powerful than they otherwise would be. And and that is other traits. Overall, it um, what does overall do? Oh yeah, it increases the amount of morale morale that enemy units lose when they take damage. So it's unfortunately for oh yes, and Ganning's policy eliminate invasions. I actually find it the only policy that is directly harmful to what you want to do when playing on veteran difficulty. It lowers the development of an enemy land that you happen to be situated above, which doesn't hurt the economy of the AI, as on veteran difficulty they effectively have limited gold and food. But when you take a city, you will now have um, a poorly developed city available to you, and it won't generate as much gold or food. So invading weakens the city you're taking to a more significant degree, so I would rather have no policy than eliminate evasions. Other than that though, I do very much like Wenpin and Li Yan, which I will be moving over to shortly. Uh, Wenpin, he has the defense trait, as does Li Yan, and he has fish formation. So he is your quintessential brick wall, your frontline officer. They will simply just be stronger fish formations and defense is useful both for fighting field battles and for sieging cities you'll take less damage from enemy units you'll take less damage from uh, city counter attacks it is one of the best traits in the game it is always useful and uh, when pin happens to have four other very useful traits well not very useful but mildly useful traits 
what he doesn't have, however, is confidence. So what you must do as you um, you know get into the mid game is you need to make a confidant for Wenpin, you need to make a confidant for Li Yan. As Li Yan does have some confidence, but they're all located in the Shu province. And so let's have a look moving So Li Yan there, he's a little different in the sense that he has goose formation, he has uh, higher intelligence, so he can make use of disorder, and he also has castle builder and transporter. However, he does have the haughty trait which lowers his stats if his opposite of courageous if his unit has 3,000 or less troops. So you do have to keep that in mind. Uh, so is Lian better given that? Hmm, he. I suppose he does have developed transport as a policy and he does have instigator which is situationally useful if you build traps. But overall, a castle builder which can come in handy. But overall, they're very similar. And um, Li Yang, you f he's an officer you find, you'll encounter and be able to pick up in multiple scenarios, so he's probably one of my most used officers just because of that, he's always very good. Um, Kai Mao, Sai Mao, sorry, um, he is almost exclusively useful as a naval officer, that being said he doesn't have Water Warlord, which is frustrating, he has Helmsman, which is increases his movement but not his general stats. So he is good for sweeping around and cutting off enemy naval units. Other than that, his main use is the train engineer's level 4 policy. Aside from that, same with Zhang Yun. He has water warlord, so he's a little bit better on the water than Sai Mao, and he happens to be friends with Sai Mao, and he also happens to have train engineers, so he is the, um, well, they are the two pillars of the Jin Navy. And that's about it for the officers we have that are, you'll you know, find situational useful. Starting moves then, as always, reward the Analoyo officers at the start of the game. Promote Ganning and Li Yan. You want to, uh, you'll be deploying them once you make the move for Liu Bei, if that's the way you decide to proceed. So you want them to command larger units. Again, reward anyone that's unhappy. Appoint uh, recruitment officers over Jiang Ling and. Xi'an Yang, as those are your two uh, bread baskets, they will be supplying your food, your gold, your troops. These are the cities that will feed and deploy your armies. So over the first turn or two, you'll want to take the empty cores out. You'll want them. No. Okay, so rather than skipping ahead, our domestics. We will want to appoint promote areas to level 10 and then with the overlap we want to go to promote register as we want to get enough gold in early on to uh, you know, fund our early wars and later on you want, to you want to shift over to prepare register to max that out. At the very start of the game you do not have any officers that um, have the reorganised military support policy that increases your maximum morale. That's a shame, but you do acquire them as empty officers or unemployed officers, undiscovered officers in Jing, in Jianyang, and uh, Qianling. Also, just then we picked up in between turns Ma Liang. Ma Liang is particularly useful as he has the level 5 policy for uh, increasing troop recruitment, making sure we reward him. He also has the famous trait, so he's very good to have as a, an officer in your frontline cities, building up these cores that you were taking over as you move closer to an enemy city. So he's good to move around and use as a sort of domestic supplement to your offensive armies. He has the minister trait, so he increases development more even further. And ultimately, he is a fantastic domestic officer, one of the best in the game. However, because of when he spawns and where he spawns, you only really get to use him as a Liu Bei, Liu Biao, or perhaps a, a Sun Chuen or Sun Sir that expands into the Jing quite early and the game doesn't end before uh, 207. So, as I see, as you see here, I appoint Ma Liang as my warlord, as he has the highest intelligence for now, and we can make use of his um, policy to increase the amount of troops he moves. We recruit, so this will allow us to really pump out troops, pump out food, pump out gold, and get our war machine up and running. 
So we are just carrying out the sort of the, you know, the basic domestics here, conquering our nearby cores, getting those filled up. Same in Jiangxia. We won't be developing Jiangxia really, as it's one of the poorest cities in the game, and it often doesn't even sustain itself. So um, at the start of the game, there's a lot of searching for officers. This is what you want to do here. Click auto search, all except overseer. Hire all those officers. Mr. Chow Wei there. Sima Chu. Meng Jian. These officers, so Chow Lei has the ministrant trait, so he's very good early on to act as a sort of a unit offensive and defensive stat multiplier. And um, who we got Meng Jian, I think he is a domestic officer. He's just one that's quite handy to have. And in Jing, at this, at this time period, there's a lot of undiscovered uh, domestic officers that would you know, proceed to form the foundation of the uh, Shu state when Liu Bei takes over. So we've got Zhao Lei then. There we are, Meng Jian. No. Okay, so Fu Kuang, he has the um, increased maximum morale policy, reorganized military, so he's very good. Meng Jian just has the minister trait, so he's just a fantastic um, domestic officer. There's a few that have the stone soldier traits. If you're someone that likes building traps, stone, stone soldier is the best one in the game as it causes confusion to nearby enemy units, but not everyone can build it. You have to have the stone soldier trait in them. And what I'm pointing out here is that a few turns later, just from having the scholar officers, our doctrine is already ranked up 25% on our way to level 2, which is absolutely nuts. So I think this early part of the game, see, we're just searching for troops, searching for, not searching for officers, picking up the, you know, it's probably about 10 in total officers scattered amongst Jian Ying and Jian Ling that need hiring. Building up our troops, waiting for an opportunity to move on to take Xin Yi. You don't want to move the city too soon, as it does mean, um, well, Liu Bei is the opportunity to uh, counter-attack you, and because of the superior quality of his forces, you want overwhelming odds when you take out Liu Bei. Even 3 to 1, if he deploys Zhang Liao, Guan Yu and Zhao Yun at you, you're going to lose it. Your officer quality just hasn't got the firepower as of yet. You don't have, you don't have enough uh, supporting traits. You don't have any supportive um, officers. You don't have the confidants. You just don't have the means of fighting off a top tier force, even if their unit uh, unit sizes are small. As you can see here, I've picked up one reorganized military so far. There is another one to be found, I think, in Jianling. We're getting there, and of course um, our battle policy doctrine is a fish. We need that just for stronger fish formation units. Here we are, still trying to hire people, still trying to find people. Still searching. And I think this more or less carries on until just after the turn of uh, 208 and I think in between these turns I also juggle a few officers around we need a few more in Jianling, a few less in Jiangyang, a few more in Jiangsha just so we have all of our areas developed and um, well, you know, they're ours we want to get the public order up so bandits don't appear but gold and food, you know, within about a year's time, really becomes a non-issue. What I do try in this video is buying friendship with Cao Cao, and we will see how successful that is. Well, not too far into the video, so I'm sending him 5,700 gold. The plan is, and what I'm doing, buy an alliance with Cao Cao, that way when I take Xin Yi, I do not I do not have to you know, race for the city, or I do not have Cao Cao attacking the city as soon as my potentially weakened forces conquer it. 
So here we have Liu Bei in action. Guan Yu, Chao Yun, Guan Ping, Liu Bei. That's actually a top tier force and um, all in arrow formation for the quick movement. Zhang He and... Um, oh, I forget the name of that officer, even though I have mentioned in the previous video he's quite good. That chap there that has both transporter and ministrant, he is uh, not going to survive this. I point Ganning as our go to um, adjudicant. He has actually 97 strength, you see there, thanks to his um, stat boosting item. So he is. Um, well, he's right up there with Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, Zhu Chu. He's a, a top tier warrior. Okay, so. Our vassals do also periodically try to buy our friendship. I call them vassals, as that's what they would have been in this setting, but in the game they're just independent forces. They do try to buy our friendship though, and we accept the gifts. So when are we? So we're November now, come again, coming up to the new year. And I think it might be at this point I decide, you know, we're, we're leaving it to chance. We may want to deploy for, uh, we may want to deploy for Xinyi, otherwise Cao Cao might just blitz it. As you can see, he sent Cao Ren, Li Di and Xia Hu Dun, he sent the A-Team. They're coming for Xinyi, and Liu Bei can't always defend this, depending on how he deploys his officers. So I think I'm looking here, I'm weighing up the situation. I've got Chao Lei moving in with his uh, thousand troops, his food is gold. Chao Lei is the ministrant officer who will be deploying alongside my army. I wait, do I wait for him one more turn? Nope, I'm going to go for it now. Emptying the city more or less. Using Li Yan, Wen Pin, with the uh, Chuku, Chukonu and uh, Iron Wall traits, tactics. And we are just going to camp alongside the embankment and see if we can either bait uh, Liu Bei into attacking us, or we're going to wait to see if Liu Bei can um, fend off this attack from Cao Cao. So there moves in Cao Ren, Li Dian. Ma Liang arrives, his 5,000 gold, well received, our relations are now normal, which doesn't really mean anything until we have an alliance. So, we're being very cautious here, we could storm the city. Hmm. Oh yes, the event here, departure of Zhu Xu. Oh, we're not going to activate that because it would be donating this officer to Cao Cao for no reason at all. If you like a challenge, by all means, it's not going to change much. It's just giving Cao Cao one of your officers. So Cao Ren is going to be at the city walls in one turn if uh, Liu Bei decides not to deploy. I'm reviewing my uh, officer doctrine policy, make sure I'm ready for battle. Before continuing to apply, before continuing to search, as even now, months later, there are still spare officers I haven't acquired, and you can never have enough officers in this game. Hmm. Yep, so making sure none of my officers in the field are the ones recruiting as that, you know, being out in the field, 
diminishes the amount of soldiers you recruit. It's just a little bit of the micromanagement of your economy you do have to pay attention to. There's not a huge amount of it in this game, but that's one thing you must do. Make sure whoever's recruiting troops for you is stationed in the city and he isn't doing anything. Okay, so moving forward a turn, we're encroaching upon Xinyi. We're waiting to see if Sao, well, Sao Ren is going to get attacked. And this is where we find out. Yep, Liu Bei deploys. Guan Yu and Liu Bei, out you go. Yang's bow in Jianling is an item that you can always find there. It gives you plus five strength. It is invaluable if you have any officers that have unique tactics that do damage, like Ganning, for example. Or if you have Chao Yun, or anyone that has that hard-hitting tactic, you want to boost their strength up as much as possible. Or, if they have the duelist trait, like Xu Chu, again like Guan Yu, like Lu Bu, you want that high strength so you can reliably win the duels. And also a Deng Feng in Jian Ling, he, appoint, he appears in 208, and he increases the amount of troops you can recruit if you appoint him as the, uh, officer, the officer troop recruiter. Always want to do that. Hmm. He is providing slightly stubborn to hire. But we got him right at the end. Now, there goes that chain tactic, wipes out Sao Ren. Liu Bei took nearly no casualties, and now we have to see. What happens? So we're friendly with Sao Sao. We're at the point where we can build an alliance with Sao Sao. However, Liu Biao's death flag has just triggered and I'm getting a little bit anxious. If I don't secure Xin Yi, Liu Biao is going to die and I haven't quite got an appropriate successor in place yet. So, I'm naturally not going to activate the free visit scenario as that um, won't have time to trigger at this point. And uh, Jugo Liang will appear naturally in a city in, uh, within the proximity of Jing province. So I'm making sure to get in position that if uh, Liu Bei does deploy for me, I am not going to get my siege weapon caught and surrounded all by its lonesome, as uh, even led by the fearsome Ganning, the siege weapon won't be able to stand up against uh, Liu Bei's cavalry. Okay, still hiring. I don't go into a great deal, of, oh, great deal of detail about a lot of these officers, as unless I point out their significant traits, they are simply domestic officers you appoint as overseers and then forget about. Sadly, in this game, um, the domestics is quite lacking in terms of you have all of these traits but they're not really necessary and they don't do a great deal for you. I've tried min maxing and well you can see a bit of a boost at the start of the game within the first 12 months because of how bloated the economy gets after a certain amount of time you don't really see the benefit. You end up just clicking around a lot and not really getting anywhere. If you really, really want to min-max your potential, and perhaps if you're playing on extreme difficulty you may want to, by all means, uh, don't do what I do. Don't get lazy and actually consider it. Okay, so... At this stage we're waiting to see if Sao Sao will accept my alliance, I believe before attacking the city. And I'm going to build a music tower within proximity of my officers so I can switch over the doctrine policy that boosts my morale even further and I can increase the morale of the officers that are in the field. And who have I got here? Another stone soldier officer. So it seems all the officers in Jing are quite proficient at building stone soldiers. So moving forward, 
here we are. So Liu Bei does decide to try and attack me. But it's only a tiny unit by Zhang Fei. And because we have Gan Ning's adjudicant with direct tactic control, we can fire that off. And as it's an intelligence tactic, and Gan Ning has decent intelligence, despite it being a siege weapon, the unique tactic will do 900 damage, so fair chunk. And that's it, we've only lost just over 600 troops. Now we've seen that. More gold, more food for my vassals. There we are, so I can change the developed facilities to reorganise military. That way the officers in the field that have had their capped maximum morale increase will have the morale increase from the music tower. So here I am, trying to arrange an alliance for Cao Cao and we're sending Mao Liang. He's the best of our best in terms of our diplomatic officers. If anyone can secure an alliance, he can. I'm weighing up, you know, my extra gold here. I've got nearly none because I've um, spent all of my gold recruiting troops and gifting it to Sao Sao. I haven't got anything to spare, so I can't afford further gifts to Sao Sao to buy, you know, buy a, buy a trusted relationship. So this is this is what I have to deal with. So I'm still searching in Xianyang as the game's telling me there's another officer there. Xia Hodun is just marching for the city. He's a fando. He's a very, very big unit, but a single unit is never going to do a huge amount of deal to damage to a city. So it's a coin toss as to whether he's going to take the city or whether he's going to run out of troops before he's able to do so. So still searching. Not much to see there. If you were paying attention to the bottom left just then and you see these pop-ups saying gold found, gold found, gold found, I did more or less just find a thousand gold through my various officers. So if you're starved for gold, searching is always worth doing. But if you are searching with an officer, the development of the area they're an overseer for is halved, so you have to bear that in mind you're losing potential gold from economic development of your cause in exchange for an immediate cash influx. Typically it's worth it if you can find gold, and to find gold you tend to need a higher politics value, so um, if you have high politics officers, they can find you gold. Okay, and we have found Pang Tong. So in 208, Pang Tong spawns in Jianyang. And he is... Um, he's a decent officer in this game for commanding troops. He has very good confidants. If you pair him with Zhu Shu and Zhu Ge Liang, they make quite a formidable team, being able to spam disorder, chain tactics. And of course he has, I think, 97 intelligence, so a single intelligence item will be enough to get him to the uh, position where he has... Oh, what am I say, lost train of thought until he has um, yet that essential 100, 100 intelligence where his uh, advice will always be right. Of course, having lost Ma Liang from our advisor slot, I'd swap out one of the promote areas for prepare register, so I'm still continuing to maintain the same level of troop recruitment. Hmm. Okay. So at this point, it's looking like Xin Yi might fall, and Cao Cao has said, yes, you can have your alliance, however, it'll cost you 9,000 gold, which I do not have in my cap. Um, my catapult. Catapult? Capital. So, I do not have that 9,000 gold in my capital, and I cannot ally Sao Sao, so this means war with Sao Sao if I'm going to contest Xin Yi. And not only that, but it's looking like it might be close. So I just, I can't do it, I'm sorry, can I bribe him with items, can I gift him gold, can I change the alliance period, can I give him a large chunk of supplies, and um, so so doesn't want to know. So I give up on that. I'm looking at, oh, do I have more gold to feed into Xianyang, do I transfer, transfer that gold over? 
I'm weighing it up. And I think I do send some gold over. And then, good old auto search. If you're at risk of repetitive strain injury, um, that auto search is not going to be doing you any favours. Clicking that every turn. But one thing notable in Jin Province, and you may have noticed in the bottom left there, is you can find the Expel Tactic Tomb. So if you want to turn some of your officers into decent naval officers, that's one of the ways to do it. As there's no, um, as should I say, naval proficient proficiency outside of the Water Warlord trait, so if you can teach an officer that um, expel or storm tactic, they'll be a lot better on the on the high seas than your average officer. So Shahodun, he's still underway. He's still taking that city on. Still watching him plow on, hoping to just march in and snipe the city from him with my, cat my catapult. So the game's telling me I can uh, potentially get an alliance of Sao Sao here, but Pang Tong, I'm not trusting his judgement. So I'm thinking, well, can that be right? Will he get the alliance? I don't see how, but the game's telling me it can, so I think, alright, go on, Pang Tong, let's give it a shot. So I'm looking at Liu, Bei, Liu Bei's officers there, checking that he has the life extension item which he's found, checking that all of his officers are available and aren't in prison, so once I take uh, Liu Bei out, I will be able to take claim to all of his officers. And Jin Yi is getting very, very low. And Shah Hudun is starting to retreat and he just took a large hit from other morale. So I'm looking there after I finish searching. I'm looking there and I'm like checking out what's happened and Xu Chang has sent uh, supplies over to one of his other cities for reasons I could not tell you. So Shah Hudun is going to uh, expire. And we are going to tip, go on uh, for the march for Jin Yi. As Liu Bei City, his officers will be available more or less for free. So moving on. No counter attack. Sao Ren has decided to try and deploy for us, but there's not much of a city left for him to deploy for. So we might get there in time, but we do have a cat support unit. We're doing 500 damage a turn to the troops of the city. So, so won't ally me. This means war. And there goes Shin Yi. Now, if you'd like to know more about Liu Bei's officers, by all means check out my Liu Bei 207 guide. But for now, um, long story short, I'm going to do my best to hire every single officer. Detaining the ones that haven't joined me. Sour ends at the city gates, but he's not in a position to threaten me. So I haven't taken Xin Yi. I now have the event that lets me get free doctrine points for having conquered Northern Jing. And we like free doctrine points, we're already up to level 3. And I'm looking here, see Guan Yu's in prison. Who have I got? Liu Bei's in prison. And I'm going to do my very best to hire as many officers as possible. And I've got the life extension item, so Liu Biao is not meant for the grave just yet.
So what I'm doing here, I'm just um, hiring everyone. Pang Tong's advice will be quite reliable, so it won't be too long before we're able to nab everyone. So skipping over this. There we go, got Zhang Fei, got Mi Chu, got Liu Feng. I've not got Liu Bei. I've not got Xiao Yun. I'm doing okay. Not got Guan Yu, but we got Zhang Fei. And having Zhang Fei will more or less guarantee us Liu Bei and, Xia, and uh, Guan Yu, and that will get us Xiao Yun, as long as he doesn't escape. Got Xu Xu too. The durability of Xin Yi is getting a little bit low. However, I've got plenty of troops and I have got quite good quality officers, including the new addition of Zhang Fei to my roster. So what I'm going to do, make sure he's loyal, give Zhang Fei his weapon back. I think I give him a promotion. Yep, goodbye Huang Shu. Give Guan Ping a promotion. Now, what I like to do with a little bit of uh, economic micromanagement here is Mi Zhu and Mi Fang belong to a very wealthy uh, merchant family from uh, Zhu province. They, both of the wealthy traitor uh, as a result, which generates additional gold for um, your cities that they're stationed in. I don't believe it stacks, so I just send one one out to Jianling, one out to Jianyang, which will further snowball the amount of gold those cities are taking. So I'm going to deploy Zhang Fei. I decide I'll go, how many troops am I going to give him to 6,000. I'm going to send out Ganning. Ganning is courageous, so I only need to give him 3,000, so he gets that, that, that stat buff. I think I'm going to go go all out with the uh, defensive force. So. Ganning, Zhang Fei, Guan Ping, who's a ministrant but also a good officer in his own capacity, and Xia Hu Shi, who is Zhang Fei's wife, so she buffs Zhang Fei, but she also has the supportive trait, so she buffs all the male officers around her regardless. So Zhang Fei has the responsibility of uh, defending the city. Guan Ping is going to take the flank. Xia Hu Shi is going to uh, stand in the middle of everybody, hopefully not getting caught up, caught up in the combat. And she is going to make all of our officers stronger. So again, going to continue hiring everyone. Ganning and Zhang Fei getting a duel. Not Zhang Fei, Zhang He. So this is favoured for Ganning. However, RNG is not always on your side, and there's a lot of RNG to this, so Ganning loses. And Ganning gets wounded. So if you've been following along from this point onward, remember that Ganning is now wounded. An officer will get wounded if he loses a duel, if his unit is destroyed, or if his unit walks into fire. So um, one of those three causes can you know, one of those three things can make you wounded. If you're wounded and you get wounded again, you become near death. If you're near death and you get wounded again, you become dying. And once you're dying, your officer can simply die of their wounds, which rarely ever happens, but that's something to keep an eye out for. So despite being wounded, Ganning successfully uh, carries out the flank and he takes out uh, Chang He there. Meanwhile, Chang Fei is defending the front of the city. Ganning's tactic did half the damage it otherwise would because his, his strength is lower due to his wound. Which is a shame. So 
So, finishing up hiring the officers, Guan Yu, Zhao Kang, Zhao Yun, and then we've got the full squad. So, I go for reorganised military, and I'm not... No, I go for the support policy doctrine to unlock the last slot, but I do go for Chen Dao's developed shipbuilding, which encourage, well, increases the durability recovery of a city. Uh, interesting tidbit, I believe there's a translation error somewhere in the game where Train Engineers gives you the... Um, naval capability whereas develop shipbuilding increases the durability recovery of your cities when those two should be switched around develop shipbuilding obviously should increase your navy and train engineers should obviously increase the durability of your city okay there we are Niu Jin gets into a fight with Guan Ping, even pegging, and Guan Ping loses, so I'm not doing very good for duels in this video. Now Jiang Fei immediately decides, hold on, this guy thinks he's all about it, let's go have a duel, and Jiang Fei wins. It's not often you see Zhang Fei lose a duel. Maybe if you see him get into a duel with Lu Bu, it may happen, but so far I haven't seen it happen. Zhao Kang. So Zhao Kang, for whatever reason, has trained engineers level 4. So he's actually. Well, there isn't an ever a trained engineers level 5 officer for whatever reason, so Zhao Kang is tied for best naval domestic officer in the game. Absolutely absurd, but that's how the game is balanced. And moving on to uh, the next saga of this video, Xinyi has been conquered, but Jiangxia is now vulnerable to attack. So I'm having to get the morale back up at Jiangling, get the morale back up at Jianyang, as we're going to have to send reinforcements as uh, Jiangxia with its 1200 to sorry 12,000 troops is not in a position to defend itself and a Guan Yu Ganning Guan Ping all injured It's not looking good So moving on I replace my level 3 fish there with level 5 boosting the capability further Making sure there's nothing I'm overlooking here. And I think what I do need to appoint um, Sai Mao back as Warlord to have the superior naval uh, capability, as I am going to be looking to do a little bit of naval combat against Sun Quan. And using the one scheme policy I do like, research adherence, just in case I need to do a bit more damage city counter-attack style. Okay, so here comes the, the Wu fleet, read by Lu Meng himself. Cheng Pu, Cho Tai and Lu Dai as reinforcements. So these are the best of the best Wu officers. Minus Cho Yu, who's probably looking after um, Lu Jian. So Ganning, he's injured, but he is my naval officer, and Su Fei is his confidant, and they both have water warlords, so they are the best options I have available to us right now for defending the navy. However, they do not have much, well, naval capability, well, much troops. So you can see there, you've got 20,000 troops from Wu, and I'm deploying 6,000 to try and hold them off. It's uh, not going to go well, but it's a stalling mission, as we can try and send reinforcements over from Jianling, which I think I tried to do shortly. Yep, Niju. He's bringing 6,000 troops over. Ganning's mission is to do as much damage as possible and survive. 
I am moving, I think, Li Feng over to Xi'an Yang as he has the summoner trait. That way, both Xi'an Yang and Qian Ling will be pumping out as much troops as possible. Looking, weighing up my troop count, and I'm just seeing it's not, it's not looking good. So, um, what I do here, going back, is highlighting the potential of savaging if you do decide to pursue that strategy, but rather than gunning for Liu Bei. You do have Wei Yan, you do have Wang Chong, and you do have Fan Shi, who has a supportive trait. So, you will have quite a good um, officer roster if you do decide to ignore Jin Yi, let Cao Cao absorb Liu Bei and instead go for the south. However, you are then abandoning the Shu, Shu officer roster of um, Zhang Fei Guan Yu Chao Yun, and you are abandoning the life extension item, condemning Liu Biao to a death in 208, and you're not going to have the rank up potential for owning Northern Jing. So I'm sending Li Yan and Wen Pin over to uh, Jiang Xiao as reinforcements. And we are going to see what we can do to try and cut off the Wu Navy. However, in an impressive display of the AI, to be honest, he attacks from two sides. They go from uh, Port Xiaoku and they go across the embankment. So, Ganning is now in some trouble. I'm looking here that he's being pursued by 20,000 troops of the Wu Navy. He has 3,000 troops and he's also wounded, so there is no way he can uh, defend against this. So I'm going to join just, if I can in time, build up some obstacles around the port and I'm going to deploy Li Yan and Wen Pin outside the outskirts of the city. Well, I tried to, and then I realised I haven't got enough troops to do that, so... I give that some second thought, I decide, do I bring Su Fei back inside the city? What do I do here? One wrong move, and I lose Jiang Xia, and Jiang Xia is a bit of a pain to take back once you've lost it. So I'm moving Ganning south towards Jianling in the hopes that the AI pursues me and I can cut them off. And with Su Fei, I think I'm going to try and build a, an arrow tower behind the port to try and provide some supporting damage in case I have a battle around the port. Other than that, Wen Pin is going for a solo mission with 3,000 troops, going for a little bit of defeat in detail. I am hoping to take out the siege weapon while the Wu Navy chases Ganning and his um, borderline suicide mission. Other than that, what you see these guys doing here, I am just um, rebuilding Xin Yi, trying to redevelop it and trying to reinforce it against what will be a very large attack from Cao Cao within the foreseeable future. Okay, so here we go. Wen Pin, stationed outside the city, waiting to see what Lu Dai does. Ganning, Zhao Tai is having Zhao Tai take the bait. So I have to weigh up. Now, what am I going to do here? Am I going to retreat back and hope they chase me further? Am I going to go towards the port and uh, fight outside the port? I don't think I have the numbers for that, so I decide not to. Will Zhao Tai follow me if I retreat further back and I'm weighing up, should I do that? Or do I go for the risky manoeuvre and try to surround and cut off the Wu Navy, hoping Zhao Tai decides not to chase me? It's the riskiest option, but it's the only one I can really, really do and hope to win a victory against the Wu Navy. So, more searching. And let's see if the Ganning Gamble pays off. So Zhao Tai is chasing me, and at this point I realise he has cut me off, and I am one movement tile away from cutting off Cheng Pu and Jian Qin. So, I failed. Ganning is confused, wounded, not long for this world, 
and I have messed up. I have no means of curing his disorder. I'm stuck. So I have to decide what am I going to do here? I I think basically I am in trouble. The one silver lining is that Wen Pin has cut off Lu Dai, the siege weapon. So even if Cheng Pu makes a march for my city, I won't be having the city melt in a few turns due to a siege weapon attacking it. So at this point I think, okay, I've got to have more naval officers. I've got Liu Pan here. He has um, helmsmen. He can deploy quite quickly. He will be the reinforcement I need. 11,000 troops, arrow formation on top of it. He will uh, be my saving grace, hopefully. Of course, and then um, signing overseers in Xinyi, building that up slowly. I'm quite confident I can defend Xinyi with, um, you know, Liu Bei's gang there. So Ganning does not get captured, but he has become near death as he's been wounded yet again. He lost the duel outside Xinyi, became wounded against Chang He, and he's now had his unit destroyed by Zhao Tai and he's become near death, so he is very fragile at this moment. Tem tremendously fragile. So, it's not looking good. There is still um, 23,000 troops with the Wu Navy to the south, there's still 4,000 troops to the north of Lu Meng, and I have 3,000 troops deployed, 3,000 in the city, and 6,000 on the way. So we're still, you know, it's still over 2 to 1 odds against me. Now, sadly, I decide I am in trouble. What can I do? Ganning, you are very injured, but you are my water warlord. I need you to pull this off for me. So the Wu Navy has taken the bait. Your sacrifice was not in vain. Wu Dai has fallen. They Wu was making a move for the port. I have Liu Pan moving to cut off the Wu Navy there, and I have Ganning reinforcing that to the east. So, with the next doctrine level up here, I now am able to have level 10 boats and Pang Tong back in control at the helm. I am quite desperate at this point. Liu Yi the hair is just going for a little, little, uh, paddle down the Yangtze, not really get involved with this struggle, he's staying in his own lane, he's moisturised. And it's worked. With this large unit, the amount of tiles I take over the river are quite something. He has lost nearly 5,000 troops in one turn though, because of those tactics, but mission accomplished. The Wu army has taken a major morale hit. My reinforcements are getting there in time. And Wen Pin and Li Yan. No, um, do I send out Den Long in cavalry? No, he is reckless, so I choose not to do that. I notice at the last minute, hold on, he'll just march out into Lu Meng's path and he'll die. So I'm making sure Lu Meng isn't immune to confusion before I do this, as I thought for a moment he may be one of his officers. And I have Li Yan go to make the surround attack. Well, Zhang Fei acts as a distraction. But he has snake formation, he's out in the open field, he's not going to be doing much damage at all unless his tactic triggers. And Su Fei, he's making a move to surround the Wu Navy. It's looking very good, but because of Cheng Pu's tactic, preventing him from being confused if his supply line's cut off, I'm still taking quite a bit of damage from Cheng Pu, unfortunately, as he still has a tremendously strong uh, naval unit. And Ganning, with his stats low, it isn't able to do much damage at all. So, I wasn't paying attention and I didn't realise Cheng Pu had this trait that made him immune for disorder, for his supplies being cut off. So Ganning is taking damage and I am uh, starting to panic, but I can't let the Navy resume their attack, so I am just going to 
move everyone across and try and surround them. If I can't wipe out the Wu Navy, I need to do enough damage where they're not going to be able to continue their siege, and that way reinforcements from Jianling and Jianyang will have time to build up and be sent their way. So trying to save Ganning, I move him north. Wu Meng's dead. Ganning gets hit by a train ta chain tactic, he has become dying. Now this is the most severe state of health. Dying is very much what it implies, an officer with dying may very well die. Tragic, but at this point he's probably had half his limbs cut off, there's wounds poking out of every part of his body, he's bleeding, he's a very unwell 35 year old man, and he is not going to be... Uh, potentially able to recover from this. So a little bit of micromanagement there. Got my reorganised military level 10 thanks to Liu Feng. So my troops are as strong as they're going to get. I'm not going to get beyond level 8 fish unless I point Guan Yu strategist. So my fish formation officers are at you know, full strength. So the navy Su Fei is captured, Ganning's friend, so Ganning is dying, Su Fei is captured, it's not looking good for these guys here. So they had 21,000 troops, the navy originally, and they are now down to... Ooh, about 15 and a half, 16,000. So I've done 5,000 troops worth of damage, I've lost 3,000 from Ganning, I've lost 11,000 from Liu Pan. I've taken a very poor engagement, but I have potentially saved the city. Sun Chuan's had to send reinforcements, and the star of his navy, star of his armed forces, Cho Yu, is coming from me. And I am, you know, weighing up what do I do here, and I decide to send further reinforcements over to Jiangxia. Even if I am winning fights, taking horrible. KDA ratios, I have the ability to supply my cities thanks to Ma Liang and the other domestic officers, more so than Sun Chuan who's also fighting um, Cao Cao to the north and has issues with the Shan Yue to the southeast. Well at the moment my borders are fairly secure, up in, oh, to the south anyway, up until Liu Chang decides to make a move against me. So, what we saw here, Ganning has fallen to his wounds through failing a duel, having his unit destroyed, having his unit destroyed yet again, Ganning has died 12 years prematurely. So, um, tragic and through quite significant blunders by myself, but he did cut off the Wu Navy, he did save Jiangxia, and Sai Mao now will be able to uh, do the finishing blow. So moving on, I think at this point I decide I might need some reinforcements. I've sent Shu Shu and Pang Tong over just in case I need them as uh, frontline officers, but that probably won't be necessary. And here I am deploying a sort of conventional army of Wen Pin, Li Yan, and Gan Shi. I actually have numer numerical supremacy for once because um, Wu Meng's siege weapon is completely non threatening. And Zhou Yu only has 3,500 troops, as good as an officer as he is, he's not going to be able to wipe out Li Yan and Wen Ping, who are brick walls. And of course, Chang Fei here will be deploying for the um, I say, southern flank of Jiangxia. And at this point, I'm fairly secure. You can see Zhou Yu simply can't break, break his way through Wen Ping and Li Yan. 
and Wu Meng, having only just had his siege, has have it, his unit destroyed, is now in a siege weapon, probably facing destruction as well. Now these units, um, aside from having quite high morale, are supported by Gan Shi, who has a supportive trait, making them even stronger than they otherwise would be. So, Sao Ren is deploying for Xin Yi. I, now, you, if you've watched the Liu Bei video, you've seen this uh, defense formation before, but Guan Yu, Zhao Yun, Liu Bei, Guan Ping. 3,000 troops each, and I think I deploy a wife for them, yet yeah, Xiao Hu I'll set them up ready and waiting to fight Sao Ren. Make sure they have all their unique tactics uh, selected apart from Liu Bei, who I simply choose volley. And I go and set up outside Yu Yang. Again, uh, despite having multiple smaller units, I do have numerical supremacy over Sao Ren, so he's just going to walk to his death. Even if he did outnumber me, even if that was a unit of 12,000 troops, I would still comfortably be able to defend against this, as this formation on the defensive, the AI simply won't be able to beat. Now, going back to Jiangxia, which is still somewhat of a coin flip. There goes Zhou Yu. Wu Meng now in the defensive siege weapon cannot do anything to stop us and we will wipe him out. Liu Chang is starting to encroach on our territory so I make note of that but I believe in B as he's not launching a full frontal attack as of yet. And I've got um, too much going on. So I decide, attack Wu Meng, take him out, then retreat back into the city. And there comes Sai Mao, with his helmsman trait speeding across the navy. He gets Jian Quin and cuts off Zhao Tai. I've also captured Wu Meng, so despite losing Ganning, he could... Uh, he could supplement the gap in our forces that was left by um, Ganning. Though notably the event hasn't fired yet that boosts Ga uh, Wu Meng's stats, so we're not getting top tier Wu Meng, we're getting an uh, uneducated soldier Wu Meng. Okay, so moving back, I wasn't paying attention in between turns and Sauron walked in, did about 30 damage and evaporated. Okay, so gonna recapture that core. So Ren's dead. Lee Diane is deciding actually I don't really want to walk into that uh, envelope of death there. But Neo Jin with the reckless trait, he's far bolder. And again, these events I'm skipping over, they're just my vassals wanting to give me gold, or they're asking for alliances, which I'm declining. In the next video, I will be looking to uh, annex them, hopefully quite quickly and in quite rapid succession with Jiang Xia. Well, just about saved. A great cost, but Jiang Xia is saved. So got Zhang He there. Zhang Xia has been saved, the Wu Navy is in full retreat. Jianling is low on troops but has the capacity to recruit quite quickly. And Sun Quan, he is now under attack himself from Lu Jiang. So at this point I've decided to call it quits on part one. A bit of a mixed bag success. We conquered Xin Yi, we acquired all of Liu Bei's officers, we have survived, we took heavy casualties defending Jiang Sha, and we lost Ganning. So, some good, some bad. However, I thought um, they made a bit more of an eventful video, and 
we will see what happens in part two. I will hopefully be able to build up a little little bit more of a substantial force in Jianling, use that to conquer Southern Jing, and with Southern Jing under our control and those cities to develop further, we'll then really be able to take out Sun and form a new three kingdoms of sorts. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I really hope the audio quality was okay, you can at least hear what I'm saying, and if it has worked out completely fine, there will be a part two, and I will hopefully see some of you in part two.